Greetings, greetings, and welcome back to I and I Reasoning, Words of Salongo. Ah, uh, it's cold, that's what, <laughs> it's cold, it's cold, it's cold, me and this cold, we, we don't, um, we're not good friends, man, you know, we're, we're, what do you say, we're good associates, but that's it, we're not, we're not very good friends, that's why, yeah, um, I'm a lion man, Leo. I'm a sun person man, that's why I was born in the Caribbean. Can't deal with the cold man. <laughs> the, cold, the cold is not for me man, the cold is not. We are not friends at all, but anyway. <clears throat> such is life, isn't it? Such is life. We just have to get along with it and um, yeah. It's just like a good relationship, isn't it? <laughs> you have your ups and downs, but you know. <laughs> we just have to get along with it, it that's how it is so yeah anyway welcome to i and i reasoning today's the 21st of the first 2024 can you believe we're 21 days into january time is flying in it time waits for no man as they say we're just john john holds it. time is the master and yeah I don't want to sing, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, time is flying. Time waits for no one. So we've got <clears throat> 10 days until the month is finished. So whatever you're doing, please do it. If not, you'll be like, where did the time go? So sort yourself out. Because uh, time waits for no one. No one. You can't pay time to slow down. Nah, it doesn't work like that. So, if you've got time to do, an idea, just go ahead and do it, man. And um, you will see. Hmm? You will see. So, what's been happening? What's been happening? <clears throat> um... The training, back on the training. Um, we're back to our salad now. Um, I lost half a pound actually. Because um, I said, remember the fasting. I started um, on the third, so I'm still fasting. Been had a lot of temptation, but uh, I said I was gonna do it. I needed to do it, innit? so. Um, one of the friends that um, I was, he said he would join me. He broke his fast, so sometimes the journey is not for everybody, isn't it? So it's um, it's just for you to do you. Not criticism, just that some people come on board and some people will fall off. So you just have to keep doing you. That's why I say time waits for nobody. You just have to go out there. If you have a goal, go after it, you know? Um, yeah, so, because I've stopped the alcohol and because I'm training and changing up my eating habits, the weight is coming off slowly because I've bolt up. So, <clears throat> well, what's my typical kind of eating things? It's just salad, basically, like, different type of salad carrots and onions and i don't have the tomatoes actually but um lettuce just try it. you know you can buy where i am in england here where you can buy the pack for like 89p or even a pound and it's ready made salad in there and then i just buy extra bits like the broccoli i buy and green beans um and fruits as well blueberries so when i make my salad apples I add those things in there as that's my kind of like <clears throat> lunch I take to work. So I do intermittent fasting in the morning. So as I get up, <clears throat> I go and train and I don't eat nothing till about pff, maybe, it varies actually, 10.30, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. It just depends. But basically I don't eat nothing before I go training. And that would be 
got a lot of fruits, um, dry fruits, and I'll add that into like um, I don't know oats. I just just be creative, man. <clears throat> and I am I cut down like this week will be. I don't eat bread, but what is I was eating um, something similar to roti, like so so people can understand, just like flat bread, yeah. Um, Tatillas. Um, so I was just toasting that and then having that with my salad. So that's what I've been doing. And I've been drinking a lot of um, <clears throat> ginger and lemon tea. Uh, so that's all with no, I don't add sugar and stuff in my, my stuff. So, and what else have I been taking? Some, um, there's something new. I got it from my mum. It's, um, it's black ginger never heard of it before so it comes in tablets and that's apparently it's meant to help with um, weight loss but she's got all these tablets I was like you know what they're running out of date let me use them so <clears throat> I've been taking a lot of that uh, fish oil um, moringa seeds that I brought back from Africa um, what else I've been adding just bits and stuff I find around the house that I'm trying to get her to use it and if she's not using it, I thought you know let me just take it oh and um that's it Co natural compressed coconut oil I've been taking a teaspoon of that <clears throat> so that's my like daily routine in fact now I said that I need to take the tablets I didn't take them I try to take them every every morning when I have something to eat so um that's my standard routine <clears throat> I try my best to drink uh at least a gallon of water a day because I go to the gym. In, when, when I train, it's easy to do that. So that's why for me getting drunk is quite easy because my liver, um, I wash out a lot. So as I said, I'm a cheap date. When, once alcohol goes into my body, I get damaged very easily. So it's, that's why it's easy for me to put on the weight when I drink alcohol as well. So um, yeah, so that's it. That's That's my kind of uh, eating habits like in the morning stroke midday when i'm at school, uh, work that's the salad i'll take an apple banana <clears throat> just to give you some ideas in case you're thinking of like you know what you know i want to lose weight and or i want to eat a healthy way and i eat that monday to friday consistently especially for this like i said for eight weeks isn't it? i don't want to do nothing so um i'm going away in february so literally it's a month left well 20 something days so i'm kind of happy so uh, most likely i will lose maybe if i keep doing what i'm doing maybe just under a stone i can lose and i know how my body works man i i, I fluctuate a lot like i, I I'm, I'm quite happy with with um with my weight when it goes up and down because i know what to do once i cut certain food that's it and then at, at around when i come home about seven i normally have like couscous i try to cut out the rice my mom eats rice i'm trying to change her eating habit <clears throat> so we we i i cook i have couscous and i cook it it's like prepping in it i find because what i say to people that uh, this, this remember it's i and i reasoning it's just tips in it like i will i will cook like maybe like on a Sunday or like a Wednesday bulk cook and just put in the fridge and then I just eat as we go for me that's how I do it so my couscous would last me about three four days and then I've got the salad so I'm only eating what twice a day but I wouldn't call eating salad a um, proper meal it's more like a light just to see me through but remember I'm, I'm doing it because I'm I like that style I'm a I'm, um, pestetarian, all I do is eat fish. So I can eat that. Do I snack? Yeah, 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 I snack a lot. So I come home, I might have crackers and stuff like that, like nibbles and then the nuts and... I'll have um, monkey nuts and those kind of stuff as well. Um, but yeah, that's my standard kind of eating. So that's... That's, that's um, helping me a lot to cut down on the weight. And then uh, I said I have a lot of bananas and apples and oranges around me, so that's that's my nibbling food instead of like <clears throat> in my house I'm trying to get rid of stuff. Yeah, so 
that's the healthy way of eating. My mom's at a hospital now, so give thanks for that. God is great. And um, she's been cussing me because <laughs> I've dusted away half her stuff. <laughs> Every time she turns around, she remembers. Didn't I have something there? I'm like, yeah, what have you done? I think she's just given up on me now. So, <laughs> she had seasonings um, that people brought from abroad. And I've learned something about seasoning, but the point is, um, I'm not trying to justify my wrongs. She has seasoning, and she said to me, the seasonings you throw away, they're from abroad. And they're like two years old. And I'm saying to her, look, I get it, because I had to go and like just Google. If she tells me something, I try to Google it. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong in it. <laughs> so I was saying to her, look, it's out of date. So I did throw them away. And I thought she said, no, some seasoning, once they're crushed, um, they can last for more than two years. So I kind of Google it, because even though I might do something, I would try to like go and find some ref reference points. Not to say that Google is always right, by the way. But um, when I Google it, it says, yes, you can keep certain seasoning, but what it is, it dilutes after a certain time. So we're both 50-50, you know what I mean? I look at it that way. So she's right and I'm right. So I said to her, listen, but mum, it's just me and you here, man. and. It's out of date, so I've dashed it away. So when I travel, I'll buy uh, I'll buy some new stuff for her. But yeah, she cussed me, man. So she's back, and I've been cooking for her. So what did I cook today? And then she just came in and helped me halfway through. We had um, fish soup, so I bought some um, salmon heads, and um, yeah. Because I told her that I wanted her to kind of cut down the fry food and rice. Rice has a lot of sugar in it. She likes rice and um, chow mein, noodles, those kind of things. It carries a lot of starch. And if you're not very... I'm, I'm, I'm quite young, innit? so I'm very active. So although I put on the weight... As long as you're an active person, you can burn off that starch. But Maurice, my mum, she's in the house, she's retired. Eating that food, I'm trying to explain, and that's the clash. And I get it. Um, because if you've set in a certain way and being an older person, here comes a young person, it's like gathering information and they're telling you, listen, what you're doing is wrong but they're so used to doing it a certain way it's that unlearning and we all have that challenge of unlearning things so i'm saying to like having so much starch like eating rice uh i get it. i like rice as well um eating rice and pasta and stuff like that and it sits on your stomach and you're not active it marks up your blood level that's the issue she had in the hospital they wouldn't let it go as well because <clears throat> the sugar level was too high. Obviously, that's from the from the from the the chemicals and the medicine she she's taken and stuff like that. But when I asked them, they said to her, me that when she comes home, she needs to cut out some of the sugar stuff, you know, because she likes um, when she feels weak, she wants sugary stuff, which to just boost her up, but. Also, it has an effect on you because of the medicine she's taking. So I'm saying to her, like, we need to cut out some of that stuff. So today we 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 had um, soup. Soup was nice, you know. We had um, lentils in there, green bananas, carrots. Um, what do we do with soup in there? Scallion. Um, mushrooms. Yeah, some hot bonnet pepper. Um, what else was in it? Potato. Yeah, just mix it up with just like different type of seasoning and stuff like that. But she loved it. And it's very fulfilling, you know, that type of food. Because I'm saying to her, look, uh, we cook a big pot. So that will last us at least for three, four days. Because it's just me and her. <clears throat> so when I come out in the afternoon, I'll have that as my dinner. So she ate that. 
Then she also on the side she cooked um, salt fish. So we're gonna have that. Or she will have that. Then we have okra. Okay. So she has okra, she has rice there, as so I see. <laughs> rice again, but I'm trying to push her more to the soup. So I'm saying to her, just try my style of eating. Yeah, so I said to her, this week we'll do, we're gonna do soup. Next week we'll do soup again. Yeah, because it's cold over here in particular England where I am. So I'm just trying to give her like um, what we call ital rastaman food in it to strengthen back her immune system and build her up. You know what I mean? So that water food is good for you. You know what I'm saying? Especially when I put all the thyme and the mint and all that kind of bay leaf inside in there. You get me? Them things, they build up. You know? Build up your strength again. So that's what she needs coming from the hospital. Yeah? Light food. Water food, you know? So you can just digest in her system easy and move around, you know? And the planting is good because it's... it's um, Planting is like uh, zero perfect. It's just water food, isn't it? It's just planting. There's no fat in it. The only starch she's getting is from the potato. Yeah. Um, but it's very low because that's boiled up. And the fish head is all good for you. You know what I'm saying to you? As I said, this is the kind of old school rastaman, you know, food that we will eat to strengthen you. So that's what I'm trying to do. So yeah. <clears throat> that's what she had today so i'm trying to change our eating habit and be the example so most of the the juice and drinks are dash way <laughs> i got rid of I got rid of some of the stuff <laughs> so she's been cussing me so um yeah yeah but you know i mean listen there's only one mother you have you know there's only one one you have so just you know i mean we're trying to help her in it and that's what we're reasoning so, you know what I mean? It tells you in the Bible, isn't it? Honor your parents and your days will be longer, isn't it? Like, without, they brought you into this world without your parents. Um, you wouldn't even be here. And I was reasoning with her um, when, when she was cussing me. I was like, you know, mum, listen. <laughs> um, I'm doing these things for your best interest because I grew up with my grandmother in it back home. And I said, mum, listen, like, Sometimes you have to allow, because I'm the eldest. I'm trying to explain to her that the wise person, elder that I lived with, it's in my nature as I get older. Um, I'm part of my culture that we, or I, would look after my mum. Because if I live back home, if I didn't come to this country, I'll be living with my grandma. And I'll be looking after her. Because you brought me here. Um, I'm just doing the same thing. Because nothing would have changed. I would, still, I would just be living with my grandma. Because it's just me and my grandma and my auntie. You know? So. And the house was a big house. So. I would have. I, I, nothing would have changed. That's what I'm saying to her. Like nothing would have changed. And I would have to take that role. Um, being the only man there. Would take that role of just being. Just being there to support her and looking after her, yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just being a good son, you know, because that's how the way I've been brought up by my grandma. And uh, what's that saying? It says, um, "Teach a man, you teach an individual. Teach a woman, you teach a nation." So, yeah, a woman taught me. And they're the best teachers, you know. So big up to the women. <laughs> they're the best teachers. That's what made me who I am. That was that's what gave me my uh, my life lessons, the wisdom, you know. So I can't disrespect a woman. Nah, no, it's, it's not in my blood. No, especially also having a daughter as well. Nah, no, I can't do that. And my daughter is named after my grandma, Elizabeth. So it's that respect. So so that's it. I was telling her, no, listen, man, I have to, you might, we, we have a saying in Guyana, <clears throat> teeth must bite tongue. It means that you're going to fight and argue. But it's, I'm trying, uh, you got, you got to allow me to lead. And sometimes we have to take that. We, we have to take that responsibility and step up to the plate even though we have challenges and you know 
But what I like about it afterwards, she said to me, um, you see that fryer? Um, there's something called like a ninja fryer where you can you can fry stuff with less oil. She goes, yeah, I might order that. I'm like, yeah, well done. Now that's something you can order. <laughs> so, so, so we're getting there. But it's, it's a slow, it's a slow process because I was cutting there about the oil. I'm like, mom, using too, we're using too much oil. I'm not gonna cook because when she's in the hospital, I had to fry some um, fish for her. And the amount of oil I was using, I was like, no, this is not for me. So we, we that's what it's about. Any it? compromise relationship with family and friends is about compromise. That's why it's called I and I reasoning because you might be going through some stuff. I'm just sharing my life experience with the universe and the people that listen, you know? So we can see the challenges, but even in those challenges, you can overcome them. So, you know, I'm gonna give thanks. We, we, we reason even though, even though I had to go a little bit further and do some stuff. I mean, the amount of shit I've thrown away, I've thrown away stuff, but she's getting older. And as she gets older, I will have to step in that role. But she's surprised that I can cook. I'm like, of course, I, I keep reminding her, of course I can cook. <laughs> yes, even I was cooking today, she came in and started putting, nah, you need to do this, put lentils and so no problem. We work together in it, work as a team. You know what I mean? Because she likes to cook. She's a chef. That's her feel of work. So, but it's letting go, isn't it? It's, 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 realizing and i think we all go through this that there comes a time in your life where you have to kind of take a step back isn't it there's some things you have to just just let it be and allow the other person to support you let's use it that way support you because you can't do everything yourself um so yeah that's that's um that's what's been happening so far with, 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 with me and my mum. So yeah, give thanks, man. Give thanks. Appreciate all the the prayers and you know that she's received and you know everyone wishing her the best and stuff. So she's back home. Still, still building up her immune system, but she's back home. Um, apart from that, what else has been happening? <clears throat> yeah, big up to the silent listeners, man. I was talking to one of my uh, friends yesterday um, aka Don's man Smokey Joe yeah <laughs> appreciate your support and um, he's on his personal journey of trying to give up something and uh, he so far is like three weeks into it so just stay strong stay focused my brother and um, you will succeed it's, it's nice to um, to reason and he said that he, he listens to my podcast on the way um, to work on the train and um, I appreciate that I, say, I appreciate thank you for everybody who takes the time up to to listen to me um, sharing my my knowledge and I hope my knowledge can empower you because that's what it's about empower you to make some informed decision so you can level up and um, have a better outcome on, on your life on what you want to achieve yeah and that's good and it's nice that people tell me about the journey that they're on and I'm I'm here to encourage you to say yeah keep going forth so he's got a business adventure I wish him all the best um, I told him that he will be successful this year so he started in a positive way and um, he, he's good man I'm, I'm going to do an interview with him I actually done an interview with him before but I haven't published it but we're going to sit down just me and him because there was somebody or the, um, another person there so um, I want to do just one particular interview with him but he's, he's a knowledgeable guy man he's a good guy I've got, I've got enough love for him so big up to to Smokey Joe aka Don's man and um, keep focus and keep doing what you're doing and I said to all the silence listeners, I appreciate you and I love you for for just being with me. And um, I hope, as I said, not hope, I want you to elevate and better yourself with all the challenges and the struggles. And that's why I share these stories that you can overcome because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was shitting myself. 
<laughs> and he told me, he's like, yeah, I listened to that one about your mum, you know. <laughs> I was nervous, you know what I mean. But um, yeah, that's cool. I'm, I was just reasoning also with someone in Africa. Um, I'm trying to put power in, in one, one property over there I have. And the person that just went around and had a look because obviously you have to have like a sketch before you go to electric company. So the person came and um, they were inspecting my house. So they brought the electrician to do to do like a, it's called like a digital print where the wiring, where everything is going to go, where the pole is, because they have to connect it. So yes, yeah, I found out, as I said, my house got broken to last year. And I found out the people actually took my, um, what do you call it like the circuit box yeah <laughs> the, so I'm gutted <laughs> I'm bloody gutted because she's like yo Russ where's the main fuse box I'm like it's inside she goes no no it's not so she sent me a picture I was like damn they took my box so I have to replace a box they stole my earthing wire I don't know if you guys are aware of what that is but it's just where you put the meter, there's a, there's a wire you put in there. But these things are expensive, isn't it? So, ah, such is life. She said to me, listen, man, um, you're gonna have to bite the bullet and decide what you're gonna do. Because outside my house, I have what you call boys quarters, which is like, they're like studio flats. So I've got two of those. So that property outside, it's, it's completely wired. With, they've still got the earth and wire in that one. They didn't trouble that one. So she said to me, you, if, if, if you're going to wire your, your main house, you're going you're gonna to also have to do the, the second boys' quarter. Um, because that one's, cause what it is, I was going to live in the boys' quarters while I was building that house. So that's why I wired it up. And then halfway through, I was like, nah, I'm not going to do it. So because the house is completely wired, all it needs is a meter box to be added on. So she said to me, listen, um, I'm bringing back the engineer because they're going to give me a quotation on obviously the I need the box replaced, the wiring, the earthing wire. But because the boys' quarter has actually got the earthing wire, the boxing is done, all it just needs is a meter. She goes, What you're going to listen, you, you have two choices. You can do one house, which is the main house, to get the quotation for them to put the, the meter inside. Yeah. Um, or if you don't do that, if they if they come back to do the boys' quarters, they're gonna charge you double. So you have to decide what you wanna do. So I said, you know what? Just get, just give me the quotation for everything, man. So it now means I'm gonna have two meters. But also, what that what does what does that do for me? It gives me opportunity that I can actually rent out the back house because now it has a private meter, and then I have my main house. So that journey you, i'm going to record it when i go in a couple months time you're going to see it because this is just me speaking but you're actually going to see i'm going to record it and show the challenges of building a property in africa <laughs> and not being there and, and dealing with all the challenges but you just i'm just showing you i'm just showing you my life challenges and how i deal with it you understand that's why the gym is my wife I love her. <laughs> you need, as they say, be, behind every successful man is a good woman. That's why I've got her. I go there. She, she, she helps me release my stress. I get the best orgasm. You know. <laughs> She's supportive. I can take. You know what I mean. She's a good listener. I can take out my <laughs> all my stress there. So that's why I go to the gym because it's. It's good, man. It's, it's a nice shoulder to lean on. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying. I love her. <laughs> I love her. I'm in love with the gym. She's my wife. So, yeah. <laughs> All jokes aside, but seriously, she's my wife. I'll be there tomorrow to see her. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have to love yourself, man. If you don't love yourself, who's going to love you? So and laugh with yourself. I, I was called, I was reading this one yesterday. She's like, you're a nerd. I'm like, yes, I will embrace being a nerd. I don't mind. 
<laughs> I don't mind. That's who I am. Nerds rule the world. That's what I tell my son. Nerds rule the world. Because you're good at something, don't be pressured by others. Yeah? Because my son is a well-read guy. Uh, he's very intelligent, very smart, but he downplays himself just to fit in. And I've learned that mistake and it doesn't work. Learn to be yourself, man. Yeah. So when she said that, I was able to think and I was like, yeah, before I was like, nah, I wouldn't take that title. I take that title. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm a nerd. I will take it. I was one of the first person in my group to go to university. One of the first person in my group to buy a property. One of the first person in my group, my personal group to actually build a house abroad and done a lot of traveling and stuff like that. So if that makes me a nerd, I embrace it. <laughs> and I'm always doing some kind of entrepreneur business or doing some adventure. You know what I mean? My business was um, one step to success and that allowed me to do things and meet different people. And You know what I mean? So if that makes me a nerd, I embrace it. That's why I tell my son, like, he loves reading. Like, he used to read so, I mean, this guy used to be like 25 books. I used to go to the library with him and we used to get so many books. Um, I said to him, you can read all them books? And he's like, yeah. And then we were, at the end of the week, because that's when we used to live together, every weekend we would go to the library. When we do shopping, he would bring his books because the library was next to uh, Morrison. So once we finish shopping, we'll go and get the books. So he had books for the week. And I'm saying to him, like, just learn to be yourself, man. Like, stay in your lane. So if you're good at something, <clears throat> don't let nobody put you off. Just do you. You know what I mean? So be, if being a nerd means that it allows you to be successful in what you want to do, please do it. So um, that's it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to record that when I go over there so we can see the challenges and how I deal with the challenges of somebody who who says um, they're a Pan-African, which I am, and <laughs> I'm telling you about this journey. It's not for everybody, by the way. It's not for everybody. Um, and having a good, strong network of people. And and that's what I said, being a nerd allows me to have people skills. Yeah? Because if you don't have people skills, it's going to be very difficult for you to do business, by the way. You need to work with different people. And I work with different people. And remember, there's a language barrier. Even though they speak English, their main language is not English. And I'm a milk cow, meaning that I'm a foreigner and they will milk you, full stop. And even though I call myself a Pan-African, in their eyes, that don't mean nothing to them. <laughs> they just see me as, he's English, he's got money. That's it. <laughs> they don't see nothing black, they don't see nothing Pan-African, they don't see nothing about me. They just see me as English, and he's got money. So, <laughs> even though I offer people jobs, because when, when I go there, I offer them jobs. I, I take part in the community. I do everything. I take this money from this country and invest it there and help that economy. Because as soon as I arrive, I have to get a taxi. I have to buy um, equipments and tools and, I don't know, everything I need. Sand, bricks, whatever it is I need to. So, I invest in that economy. They still see me as a English guy with money so it's an interesting journey so <laughs> these are the these are the challenges and that's why I said you have to have a strong woman behind you to support you <laughs> in these times all right all right that's enough so um so that's what I'm dealing with so hopefully next week um, a surveyor will go there and we'll find out to fix the problems that I've paid for before that people have stolen to fix <laughs> to fix the wires back properly to put back in my fuse box and then give me a quotation of how much it's gonna actually cost to connect to power another thing in Africa as well um, my next door neighbor has the pole the electric pole that where the power comes from you also have to pay a drink a drink means basically you have to give them some money for you to use their pole yeah and I, I need to get permission if I don't get a commission I'm basically effed up now the, there's a pole right next to my house which is in my next door neighbor's uh, compound 
that is the easiest one literally it's about the y is like 50 meters for example i'm just guessing the next pole after that is far away and it will cost me maybe one to three million to bring my own pole it's not worth it so it's easier for me to just talk to my neighbor and that's why I've, I have to, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate with him I've sent him a message today hopefully he responds back to me um, if not I've asked other people to uh, speak on my behalf because um, I don't really speak to them because I'm, I'm out the country a lot so um, that's another challenge I have to overcome and he can charge me whatever he wants to charge me you know what I mean there's no pff, limit he can turn around and say one million hopefully he doesn't do that but um, we, we, we can sit down and work something out but I have to pay a drink so that's another um, issue I have to deal with um, that's it I just want to get to the point of um, what what I, what I want to talk about was the will um, I also I went to the funeral on Friday, my friend. Um, I saw what it is like to be cremated. I don't, I've never been to one before. Yeah, and um, they just rush you out quickly, man, because it's a business. Literally, you only get like, I think, 35 minutes in there. It's just a small little hall. And as soon as the service, the guy kept coming in every five, 10 minutes. He's just telling, listen, the pastor who's doing the ceremony sermon um, and she keep reminding us listen you guys need to keep your sh um, speeches short because we've only here for like 10-15 minutes left as soon as we came out we don't walk back how we came in there's a, like a, there's a coffin outside waiting already for the next people literally so it's a business this death it, tax and death is a business yeah but I, I got to see it for myself <clears throat> so um my will because i told that talked about it last week i had an interview this week to do my will and it's very straightforward as i said i did my research and there are different prices you can get a will this sorry this is based in england because every country is different yeah so i asked him some specific questions so i can relay back to everybody here as well so my will is very simple yeah in fact, he sent me the draft, um, and I have to go on my phone. I have to fill this out and return it because they give you seven days to return it. Basically, you're just checking for like um, like the correct names and stuff like that. Where is it? Where is it? I've got it in my phone. Um, yeah, so he just wants me to double check make sure everything is correct and once everything is correct i can send it back to him where's my thing so um the price i paid for mine was uh, as i said it varies from you can actually write one yourself yeah um there's just a guideline that they give you that you can fill out and do yourself so you have that option or it starts from this is based in england by the way yeah it starts from 19 pounds to it can go up to five six hundred pounds it just depends on what you want yeah so this is my one here it says it starts off like um last will and testament of and it never says it gives my name my full name but i'm gonna i'm gonna i didn't give them my middle name so i'm gonna i'm gonna add that in yeah and then uh when you're writing the will you obviously you, you put your name your address where you're currently currently staying your date of birth um and then it asks about my funeral arrangement so for me i've asked to be cremated yeah so for this will it was is, as i said it, it's cost me uh 47 pounds which is quite reasonable if you think about it my shopping this week i did was 50 pounds so to write a will um it's it's literally less than 50 pounds but now as i said it depends on the type of will you want because in here it, it when it, he was asking me about trust and and like do you want to have the trustees and it, so it's how it depends on how in depth and and on what money you have yeah so if you've got loads of money 
that's gonna totally change the will if you've got loads of assets um, and it depends on the children you've got yeah so for me I've put down to be cremated so this is this is what they're gonna get um, appointment of executive and trustees so I've, I put down my brother and my ex-partner the reason I put down my ex-partner because my son uh, he's 18 this year so once he's turned 18 and I've asked them can I keep adapting and changing this will yes you can I just send them an email and it's no extra charge yeah so if anybody wants any information just hit me up these are people in England even abroad you just hit me up and I'll just send you some links yeah I'll show you a draft so I've put down my brother but you have to put down their proper name yeah their full name because when he called me he caught me off guard I didn't know um, the proper dates of my brother so I I had to the next day he called me because the next day they were asking me about basically you, could, you can buy a package to be cremated but they, it was too expensive I mean look they're trying to hustle you yeah <laughs> so uh, like to set up a will for the trustee and all these kind of stuff they're trying to get you into buying a big package I okay? get it's a business but for me the will for right now just states everything so I have my um appointment of my executive and my trustees are put down two people as soon as my son is 18 um i will get rid of my ex and put my son down because he's 18 it's everything is for him um and then he asks me about my estate or wherever i have so i just they just give you a rough thing so everything it says um and this is a legal binding contract everything um, within my estate will be basically shared between I've got three children and you have to put the full name down of all your children yeah um, and then it just goes on to it just it just well mine is because mine is simple isn't it um, if you've got properties then you can get your trustees and that's where you have the trust as I said I have any properties in oh yeah another thing as well this will can only work in England Whereas my properties are abroad, I have to go and write a separate will for that. So that's something that I didn't know. So I, I learned, I was like him, I was saying to him, oh, I've got something abroad. Because he asked him, what do you have? I said, I've got something abroad. He goes, no, you have to go abroad and write for each country that you're in. So for me, I, I've got something in South America, Uganda, each country I have to go to, I have to write a separate will. So that's another thing. So be careful. If you're leaving something for your children, make sure you write those rules. Another thing that shocked me, because I was talking to my friend at work, which is uh, he's Sri Lankan. And, um, and that's why I say we do I and I reasoning, because um, it's only the fool that keeps making the mistake, isn't it? Yeah, a wise man will learn. That's what makes him wise. I was shocked when I explained to him, like, listen, I'm, I'm going to be because he's going through something similar he's finished it but he's given me some research to do which i say to him listen i'll be looking after my mum, so i'll be taking off um, power um on her behalf so he showed me where to do that so i explained to him yeah you know i'm doing a will and stuff he goes my children have done that already i'm like what and this was about being a nerd isn't it a nerd is just someone who does just like to study in it he, he's 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 a seeker of knowledge, yeah? That's why I said I don't mind being a nerd because you seek, you seek to better yourself and learn. But this is what I said about people skills because I have people skills. Because I opened up to this individual, he brought me information, which he tells to me, go to the government website, which I will do, and his documents of how to go through this procedure, yeah? Now the same company I was with, with that wrote the will, for me to do that document, will cost me four, no, 345 pounds. I've got it written down. Uh, it's got it written down here. Yeah, 349 pounds just to do that. Now, speaking to my friend at work, if I go through the legal go government document form way, it will cost me 98 pounds. And this is where you, it's good to know and have that people skill. And that's why we have I and I reasoning because I know personally um, there's a particular person that will be listening to this and she will take on this information and go forth and do it yeah so 
I'm just giving her a guideline or I'm showing my guideline that the cheapest wheel you can get is at 47 pound. So if she wants that, she will call me and I will send her to that link. But also I'm making her aware that they're gonna hustle you for different packages, yeah? So it depends on the type of package and what you want and it depends on the value of how much money you have. But you can use that small package that I use and just say everybody has half. You just put it there and put two trustees. And I said the same to her, I said, if you leave money, for your son put me down as a trustee because all the trustee does is just know we're just following the will of that person the trustee doesn't get paid the trustees can't rob you because my brother just did say no russell says a b and c wherever he has all his three children is to get it that's it because he he has to always be there even though i've got a son my son um will have to work with my brother until my rest of my children become 18 they're only 13 now, or 13 this year. So once they become 18, then all three of them, I'll put them down. They will just be responsible. But for now, it has to be my brother and my ex-partner. But what shocked me, does that my friend was saying to me that his children have will. And that's why I bring this information to you because I'm, I'm a seeker. I'm, I'm the nerd that goes out and do the work that other people are not willing to do. And I bring it back to the community or I bring it back to my friends or my associates or whoever has ears to listen to what I'm saying that you can put things. And remember we, how I said I was one of the first person in my group um, to go to university and to buy a house. Now, I'm one of the first person in my group to write a will at 47. Because all my friends are like, why would you do that? And I'm saying, why would you not do that? <laughs> you understand? Because other cultures do it. But our culture, we're blind, dumb and stupid, if, if not to be rude. But like, we just forget about this. And I have a particular angel, I call her an angel. <clears throat> she said to me, well done. That is what you call wisdom. At this particular age, you prepare and put things in place. So the burdens of my, of my issues do not pass to my children, which is true put things in place and that's what I was saying to my mum so I have one before my mum but because of the circumstances that occur that my friend and mum passed away he didn't have a will so you can take something what we say is negative and turn it into a positive it just depends on your perspective isn't it it depends on how you look at things so yeah that's that's what it was it's preparing there's nothing wrong with preparing so the cost um for you to do um, to be cremated can start from a thousand pounds to three thousand pounds so that's to give you a rough idea of what it costs so I can I can set up something now where I could pay five pound a month or I can open up a separate account and just put the free ground there and leave it and write it in my testament this is for my thing and that's what I plan to do I, I don't know which one I'm gonna do but the, the point is the money is there so if I fall dead this week, um, the will is written already. I just have to send back in the draft because I've paid the money. <laughs> they have it already. It just, do I agree? And is there any spelling mistakes? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So as I said, my friend shocked me at work because his children are younger than me. Yet they have, they're in their 30s. I think they are because I'm 40. He's a, he's a much, much older man. Yeah. So as I said, for us, we don't do these things. We need to put these things in place because it's it's imperative. You know what I mean? So all I need, oh, the other two things is I need to get two witnesses. It can't be um, family members. So it could be your neighbor, for example, or a colleague at work or your doctor or your uncle. Yeah, it has to be somebody like, can't be your close relative. I mean, like your mom, brother, sister, but um, it could just be a colleague at work or a doctor or somebody um, that you that just a sign that this is who you are and, you know what I mean to be a witness so yeah that's it that's that's it I, I was just I was just gobsmacked that these guy and his children had a will and to me I think Bruh, I'm doing something big it's not doing nothing big other people have done it and and we're just the last to find out or some of us are the last to find out so let's put these things in place because it's there to help us there are tools these tools are here to help us it's used to utilize the tool same like the internet it's a tool 
how do you utilize it? You can utilize it to help, to empower people, or just to listen to nonsense. You just have to decide what you want on it. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that, that's it. That's today's reasoning of just putting these things in place and preparing yourself because, you know, it's... We're all seeker. We're all nerds in somewhere. We're all seeking to elevate and better our life and and to change things and ha have a, a better outcome, outcome, outlook. We want to upgrade. We want to change our perspective. You know what I'm saying to you? So that's why I do these programs and because I implement some of these things because I was like, yeah, remember, I'll wait till I'm 50, I'll write my will. But just by me talking about it, I'm like, I've got the money, just do it. Like 47 pounds is not a lot of money. You know what I mean? Well, where I am is not a lot of money. I just said I spent 50 pounds on shopping. 47 pounds is not a lot of money. So if you got it, just put it in place because it protects everybody around you and people know. So there's no bickering or arguing about mum left this property and you, you can't live here or blah, blah, blah. And that's why I've done it. That's what's like taking leadership. Sometimes it's important, even though there's challenges. I'm taking leadership with my mum. I'm taking leadership with myself. So when my son hit 18, I say to him, look, here's my document. You're in charge of my life now. Yeah. My mom's in her 70s. I'm doing it in my 40s. I'm like, yep. Here we go. This is my plans. This is what I want. Now I, I can adapt it as I move along. But I told him as soon as he's 18, I'm making him aware. I said to him, look, this property is here. That property is there. I'm just a caretaker. Ideally, I want to create generation wealth. But if you find it as a burden, because you have all my podcasts to listen to and the challenges of living in the UK and having properties abroad and trying to manage it, it's challenging. And if you're going to find that challenging or you don't want that responsibility, while I'm around, I'll look after it. But... If we sit down as a group of a family and say, you know what, dad, I don't really want that property. And man, the rest of the twins, they say they don't want the property. I say, cool. Let's divide the money, but invest it in something that my grandchildren and you as my children can benefit from. You understand? Instead of just having it there and it becomes a burden. Because as soon as I gone, you have to step up to the plate and maintain that property. Yeah, you have to. Or if not, why have I worked for it? So while I'm alive, let's use our wisdom as a, as it takes a community to raise the child. In. Let's work together and let's make a this. Let's make wise decision as as a family. Yeah, family that stays together and pray together will always be together, isn't it? So yeah, those, those are my little words of wisdom. And that's what I said, this is called I and I reasoning. We just come here to reason and, and talk and have those uncomfortable conversations to empower yourself, to make informed decisions about what you want in your life or what you want to put in place to help others. You know what I mean? Because we're only here once. There's no, <laughs> there's no like buy one, get one free back. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's no rerun. So if you have something to do, just go after it and just do it. You know what I mean? Whether you fail or you thought you were successful, at least you've done it. You know what I'm saying to you? That's what life's about. Just go out there and believe in yourself and you will be successful. Yeah? Whatever job you're doing and you're like, you know, I'm only here for this time. I'm here to learn something and to grow and how to better myself. You know? So utilize it and then say, you know what? I can upgrade myself now to do something better with my life. So that's what it's about. This journey is a long journey. There's no quick road. You know what I mean? And I said, I have some opportunity that will be coming up in the next, what? <clears throat> for 20 something days, I'll be flying somewhere. And I'll look at it and I'll be very objective about it. I'll pray on it. I'll ask for help and support and wisdom. I'll start with myself first. And if it's not for me, just like I'm giving the same information to my son, when they listen to this stuff, I'll look at this project and I'll be like, nah, I'll walk away. Maybe, maybe 
I will team up with somebody, network, but I can't fully commit to it because I know I can't. And be honest, and I'm not letting nobody down. I'm not taking on no burden. Just be honest. And it's a property. These are properties I'm going to see that I'm going to take over. And if I can't manage it, I'll be like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it because it's going to take time. And how I started the show, time. Time is the master. That's what we're ending on, time. Yeah? If it's going to be too much, don't waste your time. Yeah? Because once that time is gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. I invested in Africa. And you'll hear me explain this when I go abroad. Before Africa was popular. You know what I mean? Before everyone was rushing to Africa. I was in Africa. I've been going to Africa. Pff, my son's going to be 18. So I've been going to Africa from he was a baby. Yeah? So Pan-Africa was only recently up. <laughs> Everyone's rushing to the, the, the year of return and stuff like that. I was doing that before Africa was popular. Every now, everyone's in Africa because it's popular. No, I was doing it before it was popular. So I was able to plant the seed at the right time. God guided me and, and I was helpful. I got support. Yeah, and that's what that's why we do the I-9 reasoning. So it's the same like the will. I'm, I'm ahead of my time. That's what makes you a nerd, isn't it? I'm ahead of my time, I'm ahead of my group, of my friends. So when I send that information to them, they're like, what? But I've, it's, it's about sparking something in you, yeah? It's about, because we all got children. So it's something that we have to do. If not, then why are you here? You're just closing your eyes and like, yeah, when you die, what's gonna happen? Like, who's gonna pay for your funeral? Take some responsibility for yourself, isn't it? Don't pass the burden onto your children. Or to your family. And this nine night thing, I told my friends them that I'm not really gonna do nine night. Wait, it's a waste of money for me personally. I, I can respect the dead in different ways. And each to their own, you know? It's not my it's not my cup of tea that much. There's nothing wrong with doing it, as I said. But it's not really my cup of tea. I've done it, been done it with my grandma. Um but each to their own. I mean, as I said, we can come and have a drink. Um, I'm old school in it. The pastor will come around, my mum's my real friends, not my friends, will come around, you have a little drink, you know, they have a little preacher singing a little song, and you know what I mean? Sit in the house, handful of people have some food and stuff, but to have a big party and all that kind of stuff, not, not really up to me. I and mean, that's why I said we write these things down, because my brother might come and say, you know what, I'm having a big dance for my mum. I don't know about you. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah, but me personally, uh, I, I don't want to do all of that. It's, it's, it's a lot of an expense and um, some people are grieving it. We all grieved in, in different ways, but at least if I write down and put down what, what it is that I want, for me personally, then at least my children have a guideline to go forth on that. Anyway, it's coming up to an hour. It was a long one today, but um, again, thank you for your listening ears and um, the silent listeners, I appreciate you very much. And um, I look forward to um, seeing you again. And um, yeah, just stay positive. Stay positive and strong and have a prosperous, wonderful week. And I love you for who you are and what you're doing. And may the journey of success and prosperity continue to blossom in your life. And whatever challenges you're going through, you will always overcome them. That's what makes you who you are. That gives you your character. So stay focused and um, continue doing you and you will be successful. I know. I don't believe I know. So until next Sunday, um, <laughs> um, I will see you again. Yeah? Just stay strong and um, God bless and take care. All right. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.